Morning everyone, I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology, Faculty of Medicine, Mansour University. Today we will want to discuss the female pelvic bone from obstetric point of view, and we want to discuss also the fetal skull. Okay? Okay. As regards the pelvic bone, pelvic bone formed of two hip bone, this one, this one. Sacrum, this one. Ala of the sacrum, both sides. Sacroiliac joint, here. And symphysis pubis, here. Anterior. This is the junction between the two hip bone anterior, symphysis pubis. So I have two hip bone. Sacrum. Ala of the sacrum, sacroiliac joint, and symphysis pubis anterior. I have four joints. Two iliosacral joints on both sides, one on each side. Sacrococcygeal joint, but the coccyx is not here, it's missing now. But the tip of the sacrum is joined to the, the coccyx by sacrococcygeal joint. Also, symphysis pubis joint anterior here between the two hip bone. So this is the joint. There is false pelvis and true pelvis. False pelvis is of no obstetric importance. False pelvis above the pelvic brim, this area. This area is called pelvic brim. So. Any part of the pelvis above the pelvic brim is called the false pelvis, and it is not is of no importance in obstetrics. But what is important is the true pelvis, this area, the area below the pelvic brim, here, and it is formed of inlet, cavity, here, and the outlet, here. This is the outlet. So, inlet, cavity, and the outlet. Okay? Okay. What are the boundaries of the pelvic end? We'll start from posterior to anterior. I want a pen, please. Anyone give me a pen? From the sacral promontory, area of the sacrum, sacroiliac joint, iliobectineal line and iliobectineal eminence here, the prominent process on the iliobectineal line is called eminence, iliobectineal eminence. Then continue the iliobectineal line, superior pubic ramus, upper border of symphysis pubis. Okay, this is the boundaries of the pelvic brim. Okay. What are the diameter of the pelvic inlet? There is anteroposterior diameter and transverse diameter. It is oval in shape, and the anteroposterior diameter is 11 cm, while the transverse diameter is 13 cm. The true conjugate extends from the upper border of the symphysis pubis to the sacred bromon and it is 11 cm. Another anteroposterior diameter is called the diagonal conjugate. We measure it by BV examination by inserting two finger from extending from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral bromon. Okay? This length is about 12.5 cm. Okay. What about my finger? Is it locked to 12.5? I think it is shorter. So, if I cannot feel the promontory during BV, it's okay. This diameter is good. But if I felt the promontory, this means there is contracted inlet. Because my finger, of course, is not 12.5. It is less. Okay? So, if 
the anterior diameter is reduced, this means there is some contraction at the inlet and may cause obstructive labor. Okay? Okay. So this is called diagonal conjugate and it is 12.5. And we said true conjugate. What is the difference? True conjugate extending from the upper border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. A while diagonal conjugate extend from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the sacral promontory. The true conjugate is 11 cm, diagonal conjugate is 12.5. Another anteroposterior diameter is called obstetric diameter. Obstetric diameter. What about this obstetric diameter? Obstetric conjugate. Extending for, from the back of the symphysis pubis, back of the symphysis pubis, okay, here, to the sacral, to the most prominent point at the sacral promontory. Okay? So, you expect this diameter to be less than the others, because it is extended from the back of the symphysis pubis to the most prominent part of the sacral promontory. It is 10.5 centimeters. Okay? What about the transverse diameter? Transverse diameter is the widest diameter or the diameter which extends from the farthest point in the iliobacterial line. This is the iliobacterial line. So, the farthest point, I measure it, this is the transverse diameter. Normally, it is about 13 centimeters. So, this is the transverse diameter of the end. What about the oblique diameter? And extend from where to where? The oblique diameter extends from one sacroiliac joint here to the iliobacterial eminence on the other side. This is called oblique diameter. So, I can call it right or left according to what? As you see, it extends from right to left. I will say it is right or left according to the origin. If it is started from the right, sacroiliac joint, please remember this point because it is important. If it is started from the right side, I call it right oblique diameter. So, right oblique diameter extends from right sacroiliac joint to the left iliobacterial eminence. In the same way, the left oblique diameter from left sacroiliac joint to the right iliobacterial eminence. Okay? Okay. What is the diameter of this oblique diameter? It is 12 centimeter. It is 12 centimeter. Okay. Another diameter of little importance is called the sacrocotyledon diameter. Sacrocotyledon diameter. This diameter extends from sacral promontory, so from the center of the sacral promontory, to one iliobacterial eminence. So, if directed to the right, it is right. If it is directed to the left, it is left. This is called sacrocotyledon diameter and it is 9.5 cm. Please remember the difference between sacrocotyledon diameter and oblique diameter. It is different. Okay? This is the diameter of the pelvic L. Passage of the head through the plane of pelvic angle inlet is called engagement. Okay? Let us go to the cavity. The cavity of the pelvis is circle. circular. So all diameter is the same. So the diameter is 12.5 cm. And it is the plane of greatest pelvic dimension. So internal rotation of the head occurred in the cavity because it is the widest or the greatest pelvic dimensions, 12.5 centimeters, okay? 
What is the boundaries of the cavity? The cavity extending from, especially the plane of greatest pelvic dimension, between sacral two and three, posteriorly, then extend laterally to the center of the acetabular area, to the upper border of the greater sciatic notch, Okay, then to the middle part of the back of the symphysis pubis. Okay, again, the cavity and the greatest pelvic dimension extend between sacral two and the three pieces, then extend laterally at the center of the acetabular region, then the upper part of the greater sciatic notch, then the center of the back of the views. And I said, this plane where internal rotation occurs. The oxford, when reach the pelvic floor, rotate one eighth circle anteriorly inside the cavity. Okay? Let us go to the outlet. What about the outlet of the bulbous? This is the outlet, as you see. It is diamond shape, or losing shape. There is anteroposterior diameter and transverse diameter. Here, the anteroposterior diameter is longer than the transverse diameter. The anteroposterior diameter here is 13 centimeters. While the transverse diameter, which is the bi-tuberous diameter, this is the ischial tuberosities. So this is this diameter is 11 centimeters. Yes. Okay. While the anteroposterior diameter is 13 centimeters. Okay. The anteroposterior diameter extends from the lower border of the symphysis pubis to the tip of the sacrum. Okay? It is 13 centimeters. Another diameter, anteroposterior, extending from lower border of the symphysis to the coccyx. But it is less in diameter. It is about 11 centimeters. Or 11.5. But as you know, the coccyx is not fixed in place. So during the delivery, the coccyx go backward. While the table of the sacrum is fixed, as you know. So, the important the diameter is the, the diameter which extends from the lower border of the symphysis to the tip of the sacrum. And it is 13 centimeters. Okay? Okay. The transverse diameter extending between the two ischial tuberosity is called bituberous diameter. This bituberous diameter is 11 centimeters. Another transverse diameter, which is very important, is the diameter between the ischial spine. It's called bispinous diameter. This is the ischial spine on both sides. Sometimes in some patients it is prominent, more prominent than this. Okay? This diameter is less than the bituberous diameter. Okay? We said the bituberous is 11. The bispinous diameter is 10 centimeters. Okay? Okay. So, what is the plane of the outlet? The outlet extends from the tip of the sacrum posteriorly, then go forward. Inferior pubic ramus and reaching anterior to the lower border of the symphysis pubis. So, from the tip of the sacrum, laterally, sacrospinous ligament and sacrotuberous ligament, laterally, lower border of the pubic ramus lower border of the symphysis views. This is the boundaries of the outlet. This is 
a boundaries. There is anatomical plane in the outlet, and you should know about it also. Imagine a line extending from the two escalates of rustis. This area will be divided into two triangles, not at the same plane. Okay? And the line extending from the center, imagine this is the imaginary line, from the center of this point to the tip of the sacrum is called posterior sagittal diameter. And the area extending from the center of the bituberous diameter here, okay, to the lower border of the symphysis pubis here is called the anterior sagittal. So it is two triangle, but not as you see here, not at the same level. So I have anterior sagittal here. The anterior sagittal extends from lower border of the symphysis pubis and the bisect, the bituberous diameter at the center. The posterior sagittal extends from the tip of the sacrum and the bisect, the bituberous diameter at the center here. Okay. What is the importance of this? There is something called Tom's dictum. If I measure the bituberous diameter and the add posterior sagittal diameter and I found the result less than 15, this means there is obstru uh, contracted outlet of the pelvis. This outlet is contracted. If I add the bituberous diameter to the posterior sagittal and I found the number is less than 15, this means contracted out. So what is the measurement of the anterior sagittal and posterior sagittal? Anterior sagittal from 6 to 7.5 centimeters. The posterior sagittal from 7 to 10 centimeters, this area. Okay? From 7 to 10 centimeters. So, imagine it is, I'll consider, or consider it 7 centimeters. If I add 7 centimeters plus the bituberous diameter, which is 11 centimeter, it equal 18. So it is bigger than 15. But if the result of this is less than 15, it is contracted. Okay? Clear? Okay. So this is as regard the diameters and the boundaries. We said again, we have false bulbs above the bulbic brim and this false bulb is of no aesthetic importance. And by the way, the false bulb is boundaries is the vertebral, uh, uh, vertebral column, posterior, lumbar vertebra, posteriorly, inner size of the anterior abdominal wall, anterior. But it is of no aesthetic importance. But the true bulb start from the pelvic brim, as we said, which bounded by the sacrum promontory, sacrum iliac joint, heel of the sacrum, sorry, sacrum iliac joint, iliobectineal line, iliobectineal eminence, upper border of the symphysis pubis. And we said we have in true pelvis, inlet, cavity, and out. Okay? And we, we explained the diameters of the pelvis, which is very important. And we said it is oval in shape at the inlet. It is circular in the cavity and the greatest pelvic dimension. And it is losing shape in the outlet. Okay? Okay. What are the types of the pelvis? We have common four types. Gynecoid pelvis constitute 50% of cases, women. And survive pelvis constitute 25% of cases. Android pelvis constitute 20% of cases. 
and blood bilbis bilbis constitute 5% of cases. Gynecoid bilbis is the normal. And dry bilbis simulating the male bilbis. And cerebroid characterized by increase in anthroposterior diameter at all levels. Platybiloid bulbous, it is flat bulbous, with increase in transverse diameter and decrease in anthroposterior diameter. This is the common four types of the bulbous. Let us go to the fetal skull. This is the fetal skull. It is formed of three parts. Bone, two parietal bone, and occipital bone. Okay? Two parietal bone, frontal, uh, two parietal bone and occipital bone. This is called the bone. And the frontal bone anterior. Face, this area is called the face. Okay? From the supraorbital area to the chin. Okay? This is called the face. And this is called the bone. Frontal bone, parietal bone, and occipital bone. Between the frontal bone, there is frontal suture. And between the parietal bones on both sides, there is sagittal suture. And between the parietal bone and the frontal bone, there is coronal suture. And here is the anterior fontanelle. Anterior fontanelle is losing in shape or diagonal in shape. It is open at delivery and the closure occur one and a half year after delivery. Let us complete. Go back. This is the occipital bone. This is the occipital protuberance. This is the posterior fontanelle, which is closed at delivery. This is the temporal suture on both sides. And this is the lambdoid suture between the occipital bone and the parietal bone. Okay? Okay. So I have here anterior fontanelle, or the other name is called the pregma. And this is the posterior fontanelle, and the other name is called lambda. What is the difference between both? This is open at delivery, this is closed, this is diagonal in shape, but this is triangular in shape. Okay? This is as regard the vault. So we said face, vault, and the base of the skull. Base. So this is the three main part of the fetal skull. Okay, what about the diameters? I wanted to explain the diameters. We have longitudinal diameters and transverse diameters. As regard the longitudinal diameter, the first one is the suboccipital pragmatic. Suboccipital pragmatic extends from below the occipital protuberance extending to the center of the brigma, like that. From the suboccipital region to the center of the brigma. Normally it is 9.5 cm. Okay? Another longitudinal diameter, and this, by the way, the suboccipital brigmatic is the diameter of the head in case of vertex, while the head is well flexed, well flexed head, and the presenting part is vertex. This is the, diam the longitudinal diameter which enters the gulps. Suboccipital pragmatic, 9.5 cm. Another longitudinal diameter is called suboccipital frontal. Suboccipital, when I say suboccipital, it is start below the occipital tuberous. Below the occipital protuberance. Extending to two centimeter anterior to the pregma here. This is called suboccipital frontal. Normally, it is 
ten point five centimeters. Another longitudinal diameter is called occipital frontal, extending from the occipital protuberance to the root of the nose here. It is the longest one. It is about eleven point five centimeters. Okay? Okay. Eleven point five centimeter. It's called occipital occipital frontal. So I have sub occipital pragmatic, sub occipital frontal, and occipital frontal. Another longitudinal diameter, the submento pragmatic. Submento pragmatic. This extends from midway between chan and the neck in this point up to the bregma, center of the bregma here. This diameter is 9.5 centimeter and this diameter in case of phase presentation. This diameter which is the center inside the pelvis through the pelvic inlet in case of phase presentation. This diameter is called submento pragmatic, 9.5 centimeter. Another diameter is called submento vertical. Submento midway between the chin, tip of the chin and the neck here. And extending to the vertical point here, midway between anterior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle. This is called the vertical point. When I say vertical point, it is midway between anterior fontanelle and posterior fontanelle. Okay? This is called, this landmark is called vertical point. So, submin to vertical, extending between, from the point here, between the tip of the chin and the neck, to the vertical point here. It is measured about 11 centimeters, or 10.5. Okay, it's called submento vertical, 11 centimeter. Another diameter is called minto vertical. This is the longest diameter. It extends from the tip of the chin to the vertical point, which is midway between the anterior fontanelle and the posterior fontanelle. It is about 14 centimeters. And it is the largest diameter of the fetal head skull. And it is the diameter of brow presentation, when the baby presents with the frontal bone here. As you imagine, I have no diameter in the pelvis, in the female pelvis, reaching 14 centimeters. So, brow cannot descend through the pelvic inlet, and it is undeliverable. So, cesarean section is mandatory in case of resistant brow. Because the to vertical diameter is 15 cm and it is bigger than any diameter in the female pelvis. Okay? Okay. So, we finish now the longitudinal diameter. Again, we said sub occipital pragmatic, sub occipital frontal, occipital frontal, okay? Then sub to pragmatic. Submento vertical, minto vertical. This is the longitudinal diameter. What about the transverse diameter? Please uh, uh, remember the most important one, which is the vibrator diameter, extending between the two, the, the most prominent part of two vibrator eminence on both sides, from this area to this area, like that. It is about 9.5 centimeters. And it is the widest transverse diameter of the fetal skull. That's why it is important, because if it passes through the inlet, all other diameter can pass, because it is lower. This is called the bibarital diameter. Another diameter extending from subbarital eminence, area below the barital eminence, to suprabarital area, above the barital eminence on the other side. So it's called Subbarital, suprabarital diameter. It is nine centimeters. So it is less than the bibarital diameter. 
Another diameter called by temporal diameter, transverse also diameter, extending from the anterior end of the temporal suture here to the other side. This is the temporal suture, this is the anterior end. It is about 8.5 centimeters. Okay? Another diameter, this area is called mastoid process. Here, it is about 7.5 centimeters. It's transverse diameter between two mastoid process. And it is of no importance in modern obstetric. A while in, in, uh, it was used in the past days in obstetrics when destructive operation used to crush the head in case of intra-atrial fetal death and caliber disproportion using an instrument to do crushing of the head but cannot crush the mastoid process in both sides so this diameter is important so pelvis less than 7.5 they are not going to do crushing operation because it will not pass the bimastoid diameter so in all the obstetric while they are using in the past the destructive operation that was used in case of intra-atrial fetal death so by mastoid diameter carrying this importance for this but nowadays in, in recent obstetric or modern obstetrics there is no more use of destructive operation because caesarea section is available everywhere and safe proceed okay okay so this is the transverse diameter. We finished now the transverse diameter. I wanted to tell you something about the fetal head attitude. Fetal head, we know that the presentation may be cephalic or breech or shoulder, as you know. This is a presentation. And the presentation means relation of the presenting part the lowermost part of the presenting part related to the pelvic inlet. This is means the presentation or presenting part. And the first part to be felt on BV. So in case of vertex, I feel the vault here. I feel the oxygen. Okay, so this is the presenting part here is vertex. If it is breach, the presenting part here the dominator here is the sacrum, so I feel the sacrum. So, presentation means the lowermost of the lowermost fetal bar related to the pelvic inlet and the first felt on PV examination. This is the presentation. So, I have vertex presentation, I have reach.